Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Good Samaritan. Pastor Don, I'm not going to say it to you, but I want to say it to those who are watching, for whom it's appropriate. Happy Mother's Day, everyone. Yes. And we've got a few other people from our staff that would like to wish you a happy Mother's Day as well. Hey, happy Mother's Day. Good morning. You know, there are times when only a mother's love can understand our tears and she can soothe our disappoints and calm all of our fears. And then there are times when only a mother's love can share the joy we feel when something we've dreamed about quite suddenly is real. And then there are times when only a mother's faith can help us on life's way and inspire us and give us the confidence we need from day to day for a mother's love and a mother's faith and a mother's steadfast love was fashioned by the angels and sent down from God above. Have a blessed and a wonderful Mother's Day. Hey, what's up, Good Sam? Hello. We just wanted to take this moment to celebrate not only our own moms or women who are moms, we also wanted to recognize all the women that have had a mothering role in our lives. So this goes out to all the women who are aunts, grandmothers, teachers, fur moms, <laughs> neighbors, mm -hmm. step moms, and so many more. If you are a woman, we know that you are a mom in some way to somebody and you all matter and should be celebrated today. That's right. We would like to just take this time to honor all the mothers and all the women that we know and uh, we'd also just like to point out that we'd like to be celebrating with everyone like we're used to and like we're accustomed to but you know underneath our circumstances uh, we have to stay away for the moment but just know that we will be getting through this and that we will all celebrate together one day soon please be safe do what the governor asks and we will all be celebrating hopefully sooner than we know Happy, Happy Mother's, Mother's Day. Day. Hi everyone, I miss you all so much. Today is a very special day. It's not only a day where we honor our mothers and our grandmothers, but also our aunts and sisters and godmothers and best friends who act as second mothers to our children. I just want to wish you all a very happy Mother's Day and I hope that you're all being showered with so much love and appreciation and I can't wait till we can all come back together and worship together again and just remember that we are all thinking of you and together we will all get through this. Hey Good Sam family, just want to wish all our lovely ladies a happy Mother's Day. Can't wait to see you all again. Soon. Good morning. Happy Mother's Day. We miss you all so much. Can't wait for you to come back. Bye. I hope you enjoyed hearing from the rest of our staff this morning as well. You know, on this Mother's Day, we acknowledge our moms. We're grateful to God for them. We also understand it can be a difficult day in some ways for women. And so, we just want to say that our thoughts and our prayers are with all of you. We love you, we care about you, and right now, let's just lift up a prayer to God, thanking him for who you are in the lives of so many people. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, on this Mother's Day, we are grateful for the moms in our life. We're grateful for the women who've played that mom role in many ways. We pray for the women who would love to be moms but maybe haven't been able to yet or never were. But Lord, in so many ways, we're just so grateful for who these people are and what they mean to us. The love of a mother is so special. And so on this Mother's Day, would you just bless them, help them to know that they're loved, that they're cared about, and that you have special love for them on this day. And we pray it all in Jesus' name. Amen. We've got a special treat for you this morning. Carnell Johnson, also known as the Golden Pipes, and he's sung here at church for us before, but he's going to sing a special tribute today called El Diva Mama. Carnell. Mama 
thank you for who I am. Thank you for all the things I'm not. Forgive me for the words unsaid and for the times I forgot. Mama, remember all my life. You showed me love, you sacrificed. Think of those young and early days, how I've changed along the way, along the way. And I know you believed, and I know you had dreams, and I'm sorry it took all this time to see that I am where I am. I miss you, I miss you, Mama, forgive the times you cried, forgive me for not making right, all of the storms I may have caused, and I've been wrong. Cause I know you believed and I know you had dreams And I'm sorry it took all this time to see That I am where I am because of your truth And I miss you, I miss you That was a beautiful song. Carnell sings so powerfully. Yep, yep. So um, we're just glad to have you back here at worship with us today. And welcome, everyone. If you are a guest or visitor worshiping with us for one of the first times online, I'm Pastor Don. This is Pastor Scott. And we are both pleased as punch that you are worshiping with us here at Good Samaritan today. Whether you're in Las Vegas or Iowa or Illinois, wherever it might be. We know people are watching all over the country. Yeah. We've even got Cana international, international Canadian friends watching our worship as well. Um, so we just want to remind you, please make sure that you're welcoming one another. If you're on Facebook Live, you can go ahead and welcome. Get in that comment section. Start welcoming people here. Uh, YouTube, if you're clicking on that, just welcome each other. Make some comments. Let us know that you're with us this morning. And then, of course, I want to remind you, one of the new features we have is our sermon outline. You can see it right there below. You can click on that, print it off on your printer, and then you'll have that with you as we get ready to go into our sermon a little bit later in the service. You know, Pastor Don, uh, earlier in the week, somebody came by. Uh, I'll just say her name is Ann. Ann's a member. She works at a local vet, veterinary office, and mm -hmm. they've been having a food drive there for our food drive here no kidding. At the church. And so that's just super. But we want to thank the people who keep bringing food because what was it? Uh, last week we fed 60 66 families, which comes out to almost 250 people. And uh, we'll be doing it again next weekend yep. as well. Yep. So. so thank you for what you're doing with that and how you keep supporting the church financially as well. We just really appreciate that. And so not only below is there an opportunity for you to pull up, print up the prayer, or I'm sorry, um, 
print up the sermon outline, but there's also a place for prayers. Please let us know prayer concerns that you might have so we can be praying for you or people you know that might be in special need as well. And then the last thing we want to make sure you know about this morning is we're doing something new this weekend. Immediately after the 8.30 service at 9.15, Pastor Scott and I are going to be in the parking lot from 9.15 to 10 o'clock. Come on by. We're going to have cookies. We're going to have your Mother's Day gift if you didn't already pick it up and an opportunity just to say hello to you and have a prayer with you in person. 9.15 to 10 o'clock in the Good Samaritan parking lot. Come on by, pay us a visit. We'd love to see you and have a chance to pray with you. We'll keep it safe. We'll have to be six feet away, Yep. but we'd love to see you. All right. So at this time, we're going to go ahead and continue with the word of prayer. Let's pray. Lord, as we move forward in this time of worship, just thank you for this opportunity to come together online as a Good Samaritan community. We ask that you would be a blessing to all of those who are tuning in today through the music and through the prayers and through the message that you might touch their hearts, strengthen them in their faith, renew them for their week ahead. May your spirit touch their lives. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. This time we're going to go ahead and continue our service with the singing of the song, Precious Lord. Precious Lord, take my hand, lead me on, let me stand. I am tired, I am weak, I am worn. Through the storm, through the night, lead me on to the light. Take my hand, precious Lord. Precious Lord, linger near when my life is almost gone. Hear my cry, hear my call, hold my hand, lest I fall, take my hand, precious Lord, lead me home, precious Lord. Take my hand, lead me on, let me stand. I am tired, I am weak, I am worn. Through the storm, through the night, lead me on through the light. Take my hand, precious Lord. appears and the light draws near and the day is past and gone at the river I stand guide my feet and hold my hand take my hand precious Lord lead me Precious Lord, take my hand, lead me on, let me stand. I am tired, I am weak, I am worn. Through the storm, through the night, lead me on to the light. Take my hand, precious Lord. Today's Bible reading is from the first chapter of the New Testament book of James. Dear brothers and sisters, when troubles of any kind come your way, consider it an opportunity for great joy. For you know that when your faith is tested, your endurance has a chance to grow. So let it grow, for when your endurance is fully developed, you will be perfect and complete, needing nothing. If you need wisdom, Ask our generous God, and he will give it to you. He will not rebuke you for asking. God blesses those who patiently endure testing and temptation. 
Afterward, they will receive the crown of life that God has promised to those who love him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I'd like to start out my message time with a little bit of coronavirus humor, if you will, and also some humor in general. And so I got some graphics I want to show you. The first one here, this poor dog. How they got the dog to sit like that, I have no idea. I just think that is so hilarious. After listening to Linda, his human for 12 days while in quarantine, as she complained for hours on end, Sparky realized he was not cut out to be an emotional support dog. <laughs> and this next one here, this might be something that a lot of you feel when you just don't have a whole lot going on in your day. All right? And then this third one, I love this. This isn't necessarily about the coronavirus, but I just love the parents' creativity in writing this to their child. I bet you that child picked up the room after that note, don't you think? <laughs> and here's a little bit more coronavirus humor. I just love this one. Three weeks of homeschooling. My 7, 9, and 12-year-old went surprisingly well. They have all graduated high school and are now ready to move out and get jobs when quarantine is over. <laughs> and then find this last one is, I think, just a sentiment, a very touching sentiment that we might all feel. And my friends, grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Will you join me in a word of prayer? Let's pray. Lord, as we get ready to spend some time with your word, just help us remember the gift that your word is to us. It is a gift of joy. It is a gift of, of learning. It is what you give to us so we know how to endure difficult times, so we know how to find greater joy in life, greater love, and a deeper relationship with you. So please just use your word right now as a blessing it was intended to be for all of us who are listening this day. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. So I'd like to introduce you to somebody. His name is Howard Rutledge. He was a fighter pilot during the Vietnam War. And on November 28, 1965, he took fire and his plane was hit. And he had to parachute to safety where he was promptly captured by the North Vietnamese Army and put into the Hanoi Hilton, uh, a prison that also had, was known as the Heartbreak Hotel. And he writes these words about his first days uh, in Heartbreak Hotel. He said, when the door slammed and the key turned in that rusty iron lock, a feeling of utter loneliness swept over me. I lay down on that cold cement slab in my six-by-six-foot prison cell. The smell of human excrement burned my nostrils. A rat, large as a small cat, scampered across the slab beside me. The walls and floors and ceiling were caked with filth. Bars covered a tiny window high above the door. I was cold and hungry. My body ached. It's hard to describe what solitary confinement can do to unnerve and defeat a man. You quickly tire of standing up or sitting down, sleeping or being awake. There are no books, no paper, no newspapers. The only colors you see are drab, gray, and dirty brown. You are locked in, alone and silent in your filthy little cell, breathing stale, rotten air, and just trying to keep your sanity. Now, few of us are probably ever going to have to endure the kind of conditions that come with being a POW. Yet, to one degree or another, we all spend some time feeling like we are locked in, trapped, not sure how we're going to keep our sanity. I talked to a member this week whose wife is in a care facility, and he can't even go to visit her. She calls him uh, sometimes in the middle of the night to just to complain or, or to cry about the conditions. And all he can do is talk to her on the phone. Another family I know has a child who suffers from severe depression. They feel helpless because of the limited options that are available to them to help her. Or I've got another friend of mine who's trapped in a, 
an unhealthy and a loveless marriage. Each of these individuals feels trapped, feels like they're just holding on to their sanity, biding their time. How about you? How many of you are feeling trapped, confined during this time of global pandemic? Feeling like your life has been interrupted in such an a unfair way by this coronavirus? And even though some parts of the country are starting to slowly reopen, we're not there in Las Vegas. We're not even to phase one yet. And even those places where they're in phase one, it's, it's a slow go. And, and, and even those that can go out in public face all kinds of restrictions and regulations on how they are to interact with one another in public settings. But here's something I think we need to understand about this feeling of being trapped. We may find it puzzling, but God is not confused by it all. If we let God, He can use this time for a greater purpose. The question is, will we let Him? Will we as individuals seek to grow from this, learn from this, become better from this? Will we as a city, as a state, as a nation seek to learn from this? Will we learn compassion, learn how to get along, learn how to work together? Or will we become even more divided, casting blame at the people around us, throwing out accusations? Or can we learn to come together? This is really the first point that I want to share with you. And it's a long one. And there's a lot to it, but it, there's a, it's important. And I really want us to hear this. If you see your troubles as nothing more than isolated hassles and interruption to your normal life, you're going to get angry or sad or bitter. Yet if you see your troubles as opportunities that can be used by God for your maturity and for God's glory, then even, even the smallest incident can be preparation for something of significance. My friends, please don't misunderstand me. I'm not saying that God caused the coronavirus in order to teach us something. God doesn't work that way. But one of the ways God does work is to use difficult times if we keep our hearts and our minds open to help us to grow, to grow deeper, to grow greater in compassion and understanding, to become a people that have more endurance. Look at this text here from James 1. I love the message translation of this. It says it in such a a great way. Um, And this was the text that was read earlier to us by Pastor Scott. It says, Dear brothers and sisters, when troubles of any kind come your way, consider it an opportunity for great joy. Think about that. Consider these troubles as an opportunity for great joy. Why? For you know that when your faith is tested, your endurance has a chance to grow. You have a chance to to become stronger, right? So let it grow. For when your endurance is fully developed, you will be strong in character and ready for anything. Let your endurance grow. Allow God to work in and through you during this time to make you a stronger, better person, developing your character so that you not only are ready for anything, but so that you are better able to understand difficulties, understand what goes on in your life, and maybe even be there to help somebody else. And here's another thing I think we need to remember, and it's so important. Please, please, please remember that most of the difficulties, even this difficulty that we face, are temporary, right? These coronavirus restrictions that we are under are not going to last forever. First Peter told the early church about this when they were facing all kinds of persecution for their belief in Christ, and he says this, he says, so be truly glad There is wonderful joy ahead, even though you must endure many trials for a little while. There is joy on the other side of this difficult time. Wise words for those early believers, wise words for us now. Difficulties rarely last forever. They may interrupt your life, but they do not have to control your life. Let God use these interruptions as a way to prepare your heart for greater good. This can be a wonderful time of preparation. Preparation in your life to be more oriented on God, 
more oriented on others, less self-centered, right? Let's go ahead and cancel the pity party. Let's take this as an opportunity to learn to love the people around us even better, to rely more on God and less on ourselves. Because here's one of the great truths from God's Word. God loves it when His people grow more compassionate, when we learn to have greater understanding for the difficulties that others face. 2 Corinthians says it this way. He says, God comes alongside us when we go through hard times, And before you know it, he brings us alongside someone else who is going through hard times so we can be there for that person, just as God was there for us. One of the powerful ways we grow in spiritual maturity is by growing in compassion. Growing in compassion and understanding of others. Growing in the knowledge that God walks with us and has compassion for us. Right? None of us signed up for a global pandemic, my friends. But God can let this test become our testimony. This mess can be a part of our message about how God has prepared us and made us better people, stronger people, people with greater character and compassion. And rather than spending time feeling like this is an interruption in our normal life, we can see it as an opportunity for God to prepare us for a deeper and more meaningful life. I want to share a conversation that was written by a pastor by the name of Bob Benson in his book, See You at the House. One of his friends had had a heart attack, and it was pretty touch and go there for a while, and they weren't sure whether his friend was going to live, but he survived. And a few months after he got home, Bob had called him on the phone, and they were having a conversation, and Bob startled him by asking this really (coughs) strange question. He said, so my friend, how did you like your heart attack? Well, there was this awkward pause on the line because it was an awkward question, to which his friend replied, well, uh, I guess it scared me to death, almost. So Bob asked him, would you do it again? No, of course not. Would you recommend it? Definitely not. And then Bob got to the point he was trying to drive home. He said, does your life mean more to you now than it did before? Pause. Well, yes. You and Nell have always had a beautiful marriage. Are you closer now than before? Yes. How about your granddaughter? She's the apple of my eye. Have I shown you her latest picture? And then he asked this question. He said, do you have a new compassion for people? A deeper understanding and sympathy? His friend thought about that for a second. He said, yes, as a matter of fact, I do. And do you know the Lord in a deeper, richer way than you did before? Yes. Being near death made me realize just how much I needed God and wanted Him in my life. So then Bob asks again, so let me ask you one more time. How did you like your heart attack? This is that last point I think I want us to understand on our sermon outline. Rather than spending time asking God to change your circumstances, ask God to use your circumstances to change you. My friends, God is at work in each and every one of you, whether you know it or not, or even whether you want it or not. God is continuing to seek to grow you deeper and better. And it's just simply our job to let him. Philippians 1 6 says it like this God began doing a good work in you, and I'm sure he will continue that work until it is finished when Jesus Christ comes again. This is a process. Let God work in us, let God work his process. Every challenge, large or small, can be a part of your preparation for a future opportunity. So, some of you might be wondering what happened to Howard. Obviously, since we're reading about him, he did get out of the Hanoi Hilton. And some interesting things happened to him while he was in there. He writes later these words. He says, During those long periods of enforced reflection, it became so much easier to separate the important from the trivial, the worthwhile from the waste. I hope you're doing some of the same kind of reflecting as we go through this pandemic. What is truly important in your life? 
He goes on to write, My hunger for spiritual food soon outdid my hunger for steak. I wanted to know about the part of me that will never die. I wanted to talk about God and Christ and the church. It took prison to show me how empty my life was without God. And on August 31, after 28 days of torture, I couldn't remember how many children I had. I had to say my wife Phyllis's name over and over and over again so I would not forget. I prayed for strength. And it was on that 28th night that I made a promise to God. If I survived this ordeal, the first Sunday back in freedom, I would take Phyllis and my family to church. I would confess my faith in Christ. I would join the church and I would try to make a difference. This wasn't a deal with God to get me through that last miserable night. It was a promise that I decided to make after months and months of thought. It simply took prison and painful hours of reflection to realize how much I needed God and I needed God's people. After I made that promise, again I prayed for strength. And I made it through that night. And when the morning dawned through the crack in the bottom of that solid prison door, I thanked God for His mercy. Have you thanked God for His mercy in the midst of your difficult times? In the midst of social distancing and global pandemic, in the midst of of sadness and struggle. Because, my friends, God is there for you. And no one, no one ever said the road would be easy or painless. But God can and will use the mess in your life for something good. So, my friends, here, listen to this last thing. Please don't see your struggle as an interruption to your life, but as a preparation for a greater life. Will you join me in a word of prayer? Let's pray. Gracious Lord, during the struggles and difficult times in our life, help us to remember that they only last for a little while and that we will come out on the other side. And for us to see them not as interruptions until life gets back to normal, but as preparation for a deeper, better, stronger life filled with more love, compassion, and understanding. Gracious Lord, Help us to see you at work every day in the midst of these things that we face. Pray this in Jesus' most holy name. Amen. And now we want to continue our service with a great song about faith, Oceans.
Let us unite our hearts, separated by space, but united in worship, together in prayer. Eternal God, we continue to pray today for our whole world as we continue to struggle with the coronavirus and the effects it has in so many areas of life for this whole planet. May your Holy Spirit guide the scientists and doctors who are working hard to develop a vaccine. We pray that their endeavors would lead to an answer sooner rather than later for the good of all humankind. We pray for leaders everywhere who must make difficult decisions. Guide their decision-making process for the good of all people. Be with those who work in hospitals, healthcare facilities, grocery stores, gas stations. Protect the first responders and delivery people and all those who work in situations that make our lives better but potentially endanger themselves. Be with those who must remain in their homes. Give comfort to those who are afraid. Lord, others are struggling with health issues not related to this virus. We continue to pray for their healing as well. And once again today, we thank you for the mothers in our lives. Bless them and their memories, especially today. Guide our church and school as we make plans for the day we can come back together to worship and learn closer to one another and closer to you. All these things we pray in your holy name, and together we pray the prayer that you taught us to say, as we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now receive God's blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. As we conclude our service today, we want to give you an opportunity to make your offering to God. That's part of our worship, and we do it a little different way this time. You can always mail it in. You can stop by the church. Pastor Don or I are usually here during the week. But also take notice on the screen right now the various digital ways that you can give, and uh, you can sign up on the website to make your contributions that way now and in the future as well. God, God bless you for whatever you choose to do. Pastor Don, come on up and join me as we send people away on this Mother's Day. Absolutely. So as we get ready to wrap up, just a, something, one final thing that you might want to know about. Next week, we might be trying something a little bit different um, and something new. We're still in the planning stages of it, but we are leaning towards doing some kind of a drive-up, drive-in worship service. The governor has said it's okay. The governor and his team of professionals and medical professionals have said that's actually a very safe way to worship. So keep an eye on the emails, on the text blasts, on the good news at noon, and find out if we're going to have that opportunity for you next weekend. And regardless, we'll be online as we are right now. But Always. But want to give you that option if we can. Right. Now, final thought. As we leave today, there's a lot of ways we can view what's going on. There's a lot of ways you can view difficult times in your life. Remember, God can use those difficult times to make your life deeper and stronger. What we often see as an interruption in life is actually just God taking some time to prepare us to be more thoughtful, to be deeper, to be more loving people. Interruption or preparation. You can see situations in either light, but if you let God continue to work in your life, know that he will use these interruptions as an opportunity to prepare you for a greater life. Now go in peace and go and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.